Good morning, everybody. Good morning, St. Paul's Church in Worcester. Good morning to those in the building. Let's have a wave. Good morning to those at home. Let's have a wave. Ah, tomorrow we can go and visit someone in their home. Isn't that exciting? Yes, thank you, Jesus. Let me read to you from this. This is today's, my little uh, devotional book today. I am the God of the new. I am the God of the new. What once was sufficient changes over time as my spirit moves from what was to what is ready to be. When you see me moving forward, it's time for you to move on too. Old ways of doing things will not suffice. They won't work in this new season. I am passing out fresh blueprints. There's a fresh new fragrance in the air. Many are stepping into new territory. You've not been this way before, but I have. I've gone before you and mapped it all out. And my plan for you is too beautiful for your loftiest imagination. My voice will lead you forward into beautiful and more spacious horizons. I have equipped you. I'm launching you into greater realms of glory to know and to be known by me. In knowing me, you will find your greatest peace and greatest hope to move forward. For in that place, you will encounter my heart and be kept safe. So don't be afraid to try new endeavors and to stop things that have run their full course. For my holy anointing is moving from what once was to what is ready to be. Isn't that just wonderful for today? So thank you, Lord Jesus, that you know about our paths. You know where we've been and you know where we're going. And this morning, as we look at because of forever, we thank you, Lord, that we will never be able to escape your gaze. We will never be able to escape your Holy Spirit and your love. So we just want to give you all the praise and the glory this morning. Amen. Amen. Now, there are people who are doing some lots of exciting things. I'm just going to ask Dan and Heidi just to come and stand here because they're stepping into a massive new territory. They're stepping in to the territory of Australia very soon. If PJ and Paul can come up. And uh, we just want to pray for you guys as you go into your new season and your new adventure. Come on, guys. There's a microphone down here for you. And... Uh, we pray God's richest blessing on you this morning. So, Paul and Peter, I'll leave this to you. Dan and Heidi, hiya. How you doing? Good morning. <laughs> Got a scripture I just want to read to you first before Dad prays. We pray together. Uh, it says, it's from Joshua 1 verse 7. It says, be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses has commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always before your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong. Be courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. God bless you. Dad. Thank you, Paul. When Dan and Heidi said to us they're going to Ararat, I thought they were going to where Noah's Ark was. But anyway, it's Australia. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's stretch up forth our, our hands. Shall we do that? To Dan and Heidi today. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for Dan and Heidi. We thank you for their faithfulness to you. And in our fellowship, Lord, we just thank you for their ministry to us. We thank you, Lord, for their anointing. We thank you for blessing them. Thank you for bringing them together. And now, Lord, we pray for them. Lord, as they go forth, Lord, on your adventure, with your call, with your anointing, and we ask, Lord, that you will surround them by your presence always. They shall know your anointing. They shall know angel ministry. They shall know something very amazing from you. 
give them wisdom and guidance and understanding as they pastor the church there at Ararat. And we just ask, Lord, give them traveling mercies in the name of Jesus. Keep them in safety. And may they know a ministry, Lord, that is beyond their dreams to glorify you, that many people shall come to know you, many people shall be discipled, many people shall be helped and secured in you. Be with them abundantly above all they can ask, think, or dream of. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you real good. Amen. Thank you. Do you know when uh, I first met Heidi, it was many years ago now, wasn't it, Heidi? And she came, they came into the children's work um, when we were running that. And uh, Heidi wouldn't say boo to a goose. She was quiet. She was shy. And then she joined the worship team, and very little came out of her mouth to start with. But just look at what God can do with a willing heart and a willing person who's willing to know. She, here she is, pastor's wife, going to Australia. She leads worship. That's just wonderful what God can do with a life that is prepared to serve him. Okay, just one more little notice before uh, Phil takes on with the worship. Next Sunday, we would love to take up a special offering to support um, the AOG missions out in India. We want to support what's going on in that part of the world. So this is just a little bit of warning that next Sunday we are going to take out a special offering to support, well, we, I don't need to say any more, do I? We've seen it all across our TV screen. So if you can pray about that this week, think about what the Lord is asking you to give and be prepared to come next week, or I just, I'm sure you can give electronically online as well, but uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on that a little bit. Okay. Shall we stand, Ben? Thank you. A number of times in, in the Psalms, uh, it says, Give thanks to the Lord because his love endures forever. And that's what we're thinking about this morning. That's what we're reflecting upon this morning. The gracious love of God that endures forever. Let's worship him. Wow. 
you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good, you are good all the time, all the time. You are good. We both from every nation and son, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. You are good. Yes, you are all the time. Forever he is glorified. Forever he is lifted high. Forever he is raised. John 3, up to 16. For here is the way God loved the world. 
he gave his only unique son as a gift so that everyone who believes in him will never perish but experience everlasting life. Jesus, we love you. We have no idea how much it cost you to purchase for us not only forgiveness from sin, but a forever and an eternal life to be with you, to be worshipping with you forever and ever and ever. And we just want to thank you this morning. And Lord, as we just think about those concepts now, we pray that your Holy Spirit will come among us and anoint each and every person in this building and those watching online, that our eyes would be opened, that our minds would understand and our hearts would embrace the truth of eternal life. Help us, we pray, dear Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats, except for these three lovely ladies down the front who are going to come. And uh, come on, don't be afraid. <laughs> They're, um, so four or five, maybe six weeks ago, when we were looking at the, the themes of Because of Forever, um, I gave all of these three wonderful, lovely ladies behind me the opportunity to really dig into what the Bible says about everlasting life, about forever. They're concepts that we kind of don't think about too much because we're very busy in our day-to-day -day lives. And uh, Charlotte is lighting the candles because as a little team of four, we just, we've really prayed that this morning would be uh, not about us, but about the light of truth coming into our hearts and our heart is that every single one of us whether we're in the building or online will be able to grasp one special little gem that the Lord speaks into our lives this morning so this we're doing this very differently to what we normally do it's not a kind of one person full-on preach but I tell you what over the last four or five weeks these lovely girls have been on an amazing journey and uh, we're going to attempt we can't share everything with you because it will take way too long but I pray that you would be encouraged, challenged, and uh, I pray you enjoy it as well. Okay, here we go. So, I, uh, I love watching Graham Norton on a Saturday night, I think he is. So, I'm going to be Graham Norton this morning, okay? Well, maybe not. <laughs> but uh, anyway, could you just introduce yourselves just a little bit and tell us a little bit about yourselves? Because I know that you're three faces that we've seen around in the building quite a lot, but I suspect there's people here that don't know anything about you. So should we start with Ashley? Hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Ashley. I've been coming here for about, about six years on and off now, so I was baptised five years ago. Lovely. Um, oh, you might have seen me um, dotted around helping with communion or kingdom soup on a Sunday. Um, outside of church, I'm actually a bartender in a pub in town, and uh, I got married in September. Yeah! <laughs> Charlotte. Hi, I'm Charlotte. Um, you can normally see me doing Art and Soul, which once was, um, and I've dotted around church doing different things for city care. Um, I work outside of church. I work as a community mental health nurse. Um, I've been coming to St. Paul's for about six years, and I was baptised here four years ago, I think, something like that. Vanessa. I know. I am Vanessa. <laughs> um, a mother of two. Uh, from the age of 12, I lived in darkness, and I know exactly how, yes how it feels. But yes, uh, September 2017, gave my life to Christ and he's been doing wonders. So I now run um, 
baby group and a toddler's group. And yes, he did qualify the unqualified. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you, thank you. Yeah, do give them lots of encouragement this morning because it is so nervous when you're not used to being at the front. It's really, really nerve-wracking. So anyway, about six weeks ago, I sent you all a message and asked you to think about maybe helping this morning and looking at the, the subject of, we've called it forever or eternal life, what that means. And um, I just want to ask you, how you felt when I first asked that. What does the concept of eternal life or forever actually, or what did it conjure up in you at that time? Should we go the other way this time? Should we go Vanessa first? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a, a topic that maybe some people, they avoid thinking of. We think that we're going to stay here forever and God is with us. Everything will be amazing. And we try to prevent thinking about death. It will happen, I'm afraid, but um, I was excited when you, you actually mentioned that topic because I already had my worries, my concerns, and I had a meeting with God, and I gave it all to him, and he gave me the peace. Yes, you'll be fine. It will be amazing. I'm with you now, and I will be with you with then. Um, so, yes, yeah, pretty exciting, actually. You will find out why. <laughs> can you just, can, before we skip on to Charlotte, can you just tell us what maybe one of your concerns about eternal life was? What, what was any, yeah. was there anything that specifically concerned you before you found that piece? Well, as a mum, you always think, oh no, I need to prepare things for my children. Oh, I don't have that amazing job where I earn, you know, <laughs> yeah, many figures. You know, you want to make sure that they are safe and they are in the right path. So God just told me, do you know what, Vanessa, you don't have to worry because he loves what I love. I love my children. I want the best for them, but he wants more for him, for them. So I care for them. Jesus also cares for them. So they will be fine. There's, you know, even as a mum, I feel like I need to protect them and I need to be everywhere. No, I'm there to save you, to rescue. But <laughs> who am I? You know, I, I can't do much for them because I'm just human, isn't it? So I rely on God fully. And I know that he will look after them. So they will be fine. They will be safe. And yeah. <laughs> So Charlotte, how about you? How did you feel? Uh, I was quite nervous and anxious about it, to be honest. Um, I was, I didn't understand the concept of eternity, so I was very fearful of that and have been fearful of eternity for a long time. In my head, eternity is a length of time that just goes on and on and on and I can't, my brain doesn't understand that and I've realised that actually our brain's not meant to understand that because God sits outside and works outside time. So it's not something that actually I need to be anxious about, but I remember at the time being exceptionally anxious about and worrying about um, diving into that and, and looking at it and understanding that. Yeah. Ashley. So yeah, for me, I, was, I started off being really excited. I was, I was so excited. And then, and then I started like, really thinking about it more in depth and I was like, then we're going to have to die, we're going to have to do this, that, and, and the other. And I'm thinking, I was getting really nervous about actually dying because for, for me, we don't know how we're going to die or what, what circumstances surrounding that is. So we could be suffering, we could be, it might even be peaceful, we don't know. We just don't know. God, only God knows. Um, so for me, it was a, it was a bit of a mixed emotion, really. I started off excited, then I was anxious, then I was nervous, and I was like, well, I don't want to leave, and I'm like, but, but. Then I was excited to talk about what I then discovered about heaven. So can you carry on from that then? What have you discovered? Something, something yeah, about heaven that has helped change that. <laughs> you know, because I must admit for me as well, you know, the idea of forever, I find it really difficult, as Charlotte says, to process something that goes on and on and on. Because as humans, things begin and they end, don't they? But eternity um, is going on forever. And uh, I... I kind of just pushed it away, I think. Like, you know, we know it's going to be good, and that's all I can get my head around, really, and I've just got to trust the Lord. But tell us something about heaven 
text that has really excited you? Oh, there's, we found so much information on heaven, mostly from the book of Revelation, but it, 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 there was loads of descriptions on heaven that really, really excited me even more. So that there was there was ones about gems and treasures in heaven. We've got uh, there's the light of God. If you go and see the light of God, there'll be no darkness. Oh, it's just it's amazing. I'm just just those scriptures are just just give me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. So Charlotte, has your has your, has your thinking changed at all over the course of the past five or six weeks? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I'm definitely far more excited about heaven and the prospect of heaven, um, looking at what heaven is and understanding what eternity is have definitely um, changed my thinking. I don't worry about that concept of time anymore. Um, it's more about being with God and the presence of God and that being heaven. So I'm not concerned anymore. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Have you got... Um, a scripture there. Well, I know she has. So, uh, have you? Can you share one of your favourite scriptures about heaven? Um, because you made a really profound comment in one of our get-togethers. We've had lots of get-togethers, either on Zoom or in the garden, with blankets and you know all the things we've been doing. But uh, yeah, have you got one you can share? Um, yeah, it's from Revelation, the um, chapter twenty-one. It was infused with the glory of God, and its radiance was like that of a very rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? Just that we're going to be in the presence of God. Um, we did talk about Revelation for you theologians amongst us, but uh, Revelation is a picture. It's a picture of heaven in human words. And what we have to understand is that uh, our human vocabulary doesn't have the words to describe heaven because it's a spiritual place. It's a place that um, I think Ashley said one week, she said, I, I just can't get my head around how much more there is. I, can't, I won't be able to embrace it here. But heaven is a beautiful place full of the presence of God. It's a place of worship. And as a worship leader, I'm quite interested in how that's going to look, you know. Because there's enough debate amongst the churches of the 21st century as to how we should do worship. But if you add that in with the ch churches of the 1st, 2nd and 3rd centuries, and you think of all the different styles of music we've had, and you think about all the... Well, we're not going to have any time to grumble, are we, up there? Because it's just going to be, <laughs> just going to be wonderful. And, uh, yeah. Well, talking uh, about worship... I do have some notes about heaven. It's like, again, what's heaven? So I got really excited when I found out that obviously it's a mansion of many rooms. So, um, and also that mansion is not built by human hands. So definitely will be the right place to be. Um, and obviously it's a place of worship. It's on Hebrews 12, 22, 23. It is there. I'll be singing again. <laughs> Tell us about your three houses, Vanessa. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, so we know where we're going. We have to work hard to get there. So when we think about heaven, it's, it's like there. And um, my three houses is I've got the house where you know, I used to live, it's part of my past. It's a dark place where I don't belong and I no longer live there. You say amen. <laughs> <laughs> so that past house, it's gone. And then the present house, yeah, it's, it's you know, close by in Bath Road. <laughs> it's where I am and you all have your present houses as well. Um, maybe that you've paid for. And I'm afraid you're not going to be taking that with you. Um, but <laughs> the house that I look forward to, it's not really a house. Like I said, it's a mansion. Oh, wow. Of many rooms. And that one, it's absolutely free of charge. It's an inheritance that I got from my father. And yes, you've got your room there as well. It's very exciting. It's free of charge. Well, not really free. He paid the price. So with his blood absolutely so yes but I've got my place there <laughs> fantastic I remember uh, when we were we started talking about all these wonderful exciting things and uh, 
I, I came into the church and I looked at this wonderful welcome home thing that uh, my husband had actually uh, sorted out. And I went home and I said, John, you've got it wrong. This is not my home. This is my halfway house. And I can't wait to go home to be with Jesus and to just experience so much more. And uh, yeah, and you're absolutely right. It was very expensive. Jesus paid the biggest price, didn't he? And we need to thank him for that. Yeah. Okay. So, Ashley can start with this one. What's the difference then between heaven and eternity? Well, eternity for us starts now. It, it definitely starts now. And, and heaven is a place where we go after death. So, uh, I, I, in one of our, our, our um, get togethers, God has said that you know, death is his doorway. So, we've got to pass through that doorway to get to heaven. And, and that's just, I think, what it is. So, in, in our lives, obviously, Jesus paid the price to give us eternal life. So, that starts now. Um, but our way is to heaven, provided we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Fantastic. And uh, in Colossians, it tells us, you know, that when we accept Jesus, we have invested in us the fullness of the Godhead. Now, think about that. When we give our lives to Jesus, so Jesus was a representation of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It all was invested in Jesus. When we give our lives to Christ, that is invested in us too. And we're not waiting for that day when we go through that doorway. It starts right now. Amen. You have invested in you the fullness of the Godhead in a body form. Here, this is you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We, we, we just don't get it, do we? We don't get it. We don't understand the riches that God has already invested in us. Eternity starts now. And so, ladies, what difference does it make in our lives, or should it, or can it make in our lives now from this day forward? Ashley, you said a really powerful thing. Can you just tell us, can you remember, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, yeah, she does. I said this question, and out of Ashley's mouth came this. My past is irrelevant. Yes. <laughs> Say that again. My past is irrelevant. You know, past is irrelevant. When you give your life to Jesus, the price has been paid. And if you're sitting here this morning or online and you're thinking, my life is just such a mess, you know, Jesus makes the difference. And if you knew Ashley's past, you would know that that's a work of God for her to get to that place where she can say that, and she really means it. That is a work of God. It's amazing. Okay, um, Charlotte, did you want to say anything on that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay, you can say no. <laughs> okay, um, I think that actually it's... Um, Knowing that makes you more intimate with Jesus. It's about intimacy. It's about the presence of Jesus. It's about living your life for Jesus to grow in relationship and grow closer to him. If we're going to go and spend time, at, be, with heaven, be in heaven and be with Jesus for all eternity, then that, if that relationship starts now, that being that presence of being with Jesus also starts now um, in John, um, 1 John chapter 2, it says we can be sure that we've truly come to live in intimacy with God, not just by saying I am intimate with God, but by walking in the footsteps of Jesus. Amen. Walking, walking. Mm. <laughs> I think some of us missed that. Can you read that verse again? We can be sure that we've truly come to live in intimacy with God, not just by saying I am intimate with God, but by walking in the footsteps of Jesus. Wow. That's beautiful. I think that talks, like you said, a lot about um, being in his presence, isn't it? And having that close relationship uh, with him and talk to him and communicate. Communicate is not just obviously you will talk and be like, okay, I spoke to you, goodbye. <laughs> you know, uh, you stop, you, you stay still and you listen, you wait for him to talk to you. So, you know, me calling to Dart and be like, Dart, that's, that's not, you know, talking. That's not a relationship. I need to listen from her as well. And yes, being in his presence, again, Revelation 7, 15, he talks about um, desiring to be in his presence. 
Oh my goodness. So we all need to desire to be in his presence and not just desire to receive his presence, isn't it? So presence, not presence. Well, both. <laughs> <laughs> and that's come from someone whose English is her second language, yes. <laughs> okay, so let's just have a little look at um, this doorway that we were talking about, um, the doorway of death. It's something that we don't like to think about. Um, the first preach I ever gave was when I was 14 to a group of Covenanter boys. I don't even know if we still have Covenanters these days, but anyway. And uh, I was asked to speak on death because it wasn't long before that my dad had died and I'd had to think about all those things that we don't like to talk about. But what would you say to someone who is perhaps afraid and doesn't want to think about the, that time, that day, that, that moment when we pass from one life to another. Remember, uh, Peter Boyd spoke last week about death is just a momentary thing when we go from uh, presence in this world to presence in the next. And what would you say to someone if they're sitting here now feeling like, actually, I don't want to think about that. I, I don't want to leave my family. I don't want to um, I just don't want to think about it. What what can you say to them? Vanessa? Well, it depends as well who the person is because, first of all, the person needs to receive God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And you need to receive, you need to believe, you need to accept, you need to repent. So, um, but if I'm talking, for example, with one of you, when, which I am now, I would say, I would read Isaiah 65, 17, for example, where it says, see, I will create new heavens and new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor they will come in mind, but be glad and rejoice. Rejoice, you know. So I think it's just beautiful. You will not remember. And if he also says that we must be glad and rejoice, there's more to come. He's not done with you yet. There's more to come and it will be amazing. I, <laughs> um, I think the, actually the biggest thing is surrendering your fear to God and allowing him to carry you. Um, I think we can all be very anxious, not about death itself maybe, but actually the process of death. Um, but in John verse um, chapter 14, um, it says, don't worry or surrender in your fear. For you, you've believed in God. Now trust in, and believe in me also. When everything is ready, I will come back and take you to myself so you will be where I am. Amazing. God's going to be on that process with us when we're, when we're going through death. Jesus will be there. He's coming back. He's going to take your hand and lead you home to where you're going to be for all eternity. I think that's awesome. One thing I will say is that the, uh, us humans, uh, for, for us, it's, it's, it's normal to feel fearful of, of dying itself. Um, so don't think that you're, you know, that you feeling like that is, is wrong because it's not. Um, but as I said, it's, Remembering all the, the, the scriptures that have got all these wonderful things about what heaven is going to be like uh, is, is just amazing. If you fo focus on that, the thought of death is just literally a moment, and it is literally a moment that you, we all have to go through, unfortunately. Um, in Ecclesiastes verse 11, it actually says that we can't fathom what God has for us. Amen. And, and, and so we know that even though there's scriptures in there that says, it describes what, what heaven's going to be like, and it's amazing. But actually, he's got a lot more for you than that. Yes. And I think it's fantastic. I can't wait. Suffering is temporary, isn't it? <laughs> Suffering is temporary. It's, it's yeah. hard sometimes. It's, it is exhausting, you know, as fighting. It's like a battle, a daily battle, where we have to, you know, keep strong. Um, so, yes, the suffering is temporary, but joy will be eternal. Fantastic. Thank you, girls. Uh, last one, I think. I've just seen what the time is. So, last one. Are you excited about your future from now? Ashley. Absolutely. 
<laughs> yes, definitely, very much so. Yeah. Obviously, yes. I'm looking forward to for my house. I know exactly what's going to be there. Well, it will provide more than I expect. But it will be amazing. You remember talking about the gems and everything. We all have different views. Yeah. yeah. In, you know, oh, it will just I be amazing. I just can't wait for the worship. It's going to be amazing. Oh. <laughs> we just were all about Jesus. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> he will provide he will provide more everything that you love he knows what you love if you maybe love your pets or a nice king size bed or you will be there it will be even more comfortable it will be amazing <laughs> i just can't wait vanessa's bag seat the penthouse suite on the top i usually have said that <laughs> yes <laughs> it was really interesting though actually when we were talking about that and, and and Charlotte read out from Revelation and actually Vanessa was quite horrified because when, um, Charlotte was really really excited about the gemstones and the golden streets and all of that and, and Vanessa said no I want trees and waterfalls and I want nature and I want natural stuff and uh, you know we, it's so true what you said actually it's so much bigger and so much better than we can comprehend and i think that's what we have to take away from this you know it's so much better than what we can comprehend god knows us all he knows our hearts he knows what we love and um it, it is and 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 if we can get our heads around that truth then it makes a difference as to how we live our lives now it makes a difference because those things that become so big and so overtaking and overwhelming in our lives today, actually, we can look at eternity and think, yeah, but this is temporary. I'm not taking this with me. You know, we, uh, John and I, a year ago, appointed some idiot builder who's ran off with quite a lot of our savings. And we live in, so we've lived all the way through COVID with half a garage. And, oh, it's just been enormous. And I've had to really, really consciously decide not to let that bug me not to let anger become rooted in my spirit because you know actually i'm having a penthouse suite okay so i'm um, sorry <laughs> we might have to share but uh you know it, it really is irrelevant in the bigger scheme of things and i think one of my biggest my one of my biggest challenges w was my family and I don't want to go because I want to be with my kids. I want to see my grandkids. I want to make sure they love Jesus. But even the most precious things in our lives, we need to, right now, put them in the master's hands and trust him. We have to. And that way we're released and we can walk in the freedom that Jesus says. I just want to say thank you to you guys because you have just been fantastic this morning. You have been fantastic. And um, it's been great. We've all grown. We've all grown. They're great girls. Have a chat to them afterwards. I'm going to just finish uh, with uh, some scriptures from John 17. Now, this was Jesus' prayer before he was going to the cross, before he was going to carry that cost that we've just talked about earlier. And this was his prayer. Father, the time has come. Unveil the glorious splendor of your son so that I will magnify your glory. Now, there was immense suffering to follow that statement, wasn't there? Huge suffering. But it was not a sign of weakness. It was a sign of strength. And here Jesus is saying, unveil the glorious splendor of your son so that I will magnify your glory. You have already given me authority over all people so that I may give the gift of eternal life to all those that you have given to me. And then it says this, eternal life means to know and experience you as the true one and only true God and to know and experience Jesus Christ as the son whom you have sent. Eternal life forever starts now. We have to make that decision. You know, that doorway of death leads to immediately to two other doors. There's the door to life and there's the door to death. Death, life forever, death forever. And I just pray that each one of us has made those decisions, those important decisions that the girls have talked about, to give our lives to Jesus so that today are forever 
as life starts. Shall we stand? Just want to ask some questions which you can answer in your hearts as we stand before the throne of grace this morning. Where am I on my journey with Jesus? Have I started? Where is my forever heading now? Am I forever heading into life? Or am I heading forever into death? If you're not sure, don't worry. Because today is the day you can make sure. It may be that this morning you want to give your life to Jesus Christ so that your forever is secured. But not just eternity right now. Not just heaven right now. I'm just going to pray. If you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, if you want to thank him for that enormous cost that he paid for you to receive eternal life, then just say this really simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I don't understand everything, but I believe that you came and you died on that cross. You were raised from death so that I could have life eternal purchased for me and I want to receive that today I want to receive that today from you please fill me with your Holy Spirit please give me that life that I just so long for help me to live for you from this moment give me grace to understand give me revelation that brings truth into my heart and help me to follow you And it may be today that you're standing here and there's anxiety and fear. As Ashley has said, fear in itself is not wrong. But when it takes us away from the Savior, we struggle on our own. If you're fearful and you want to just say something to Jesus now, you can pray this prayer with me or you can pray one of your own. Lord Jesus, I am struggling with the thought of eternity and heaven and leaving loved ones and all those things. I am struggling, but I want, Lord Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit right now, to give those fears, those wrong fears and wrong anxieties to you. God, I just want to get to that place where I trust you. Help me to do that, Lord, right now. Help me to learn to praise you in all my circumstances. Help me to learn to place you in the center of my life. And help me to learn to trust you with everything that is precious to me. So that I may glorify you too as I walk day by day, step by step into what you have planned for me. Let's just give the Holy Spirit a minute to work, to move. We're going to sing a wonderful song, and I I encourage you to use that as a prayer, as an uh, exclamation of worship to God, um, and to thank him that he's got your forever in his hands. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord. Your holy name. 
just commit this week to you. We commit our loved ones to you. We commit our travel plans to you. And we just ask God that your name be glorified in his life, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Jesus, thank you. I'm going to get Phil to sing that chorus again as the stewards will prompt you to go out. Okay. Have a great week, everyone. Look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like 